Hi there and welcome to another webcast brought to you by the guys here at Innova Systems. My name is Matthew and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a question that I get asked quite a lot and that is can I simulate temperature changes in components and the changes in their geometry so expansion or contraction as a result of that temperature change. The answer is yes you can using either SolidWorks Premium or any of the simulation packages available in SolidWorks. So let's have a look. Okay what you'll see I've got here is an assembly with a couple of components here. I've got a base block which is uh, made of steel, a top block made of copper and a pin that's going through both. If I just switch to the exploded view you'll see we've got a hole that penetrates both, we've got a counter bore and then the pin penetrating through both parts. If I switch back to our collapsed view again and have a look at the front elevation You'll see that at the moment the top of the pin is sitting flush with the very top of that top plate and that's what we want. Ideally we don't want any protrusions of this pin beyond the top surface of that plate. So let's have a look at our pin. And what I'm going to do is using the simulation tab I'm going to create a new study. I'm going to call this thermal expansion. And notice I'm using a static study. Now what we can do here is by clicking on the external loads we can specify a temperature. I'm going to use my selection filter to grab the whole body here and I'm just going to specify a temperature of 200 degrees C and that's going to be my final elevated temperature. Now right clicking on the study here I can go to the properties and by switching to the flow slash thermal effects tab I can specify a zero strain reference temperature. So for instance, I'm just going to switch this to Celsius and say zero degrees C. I'm also going to use the soft springs to stabilize my model in this case because I don't want to apply any fixtures. This is going to allow the pin to expand in a natural way. Okay, so I'll just hit OK there. And so we've already covered that we don't need fixtures you'll see that we've already got our material specified from the original part so all that's left to do is generate our mesh and I'm just going to come in and first of all apply a mesh control because you'll notice I've got some chamfers in here I'm going to select each of these chamfered edges and specify a mesh density of 0.25 millimeters in this case then I'm going to right click on my mesh and generate my global mesh and in this case I'm going to use a standard mesh and I'm going to specify a global size of 0.5 millimeters with a tolerance of 0.1 so now you'll see I've got a nice looking mesh on there and all that's left for me to do is click run so now you'll see I've got my deformed result I can uncheck the deformed result just to show the difference between the two you'll notice here that I've got a deformation scale of 28 which is exaggerating the displacements here if I right click on the displacement plot edit the definition I can change that to true scale and we get a more realistic view of our deformation now a really nice handy tool that we can use here is the ability to create a body from the deformed shape so if I select a new part here and call this deformed I can now switch back into my assembly and I'm just going to hide this pin and instead insert my deformed pin like so now I can use a standard mate as I would normally to put this pin in place first of all I'm going to specify that concentric mate and I'm actually going to use the move component tool because this is going to allow me to specify collision detection and ask it to stop upon collision so now what I'm going to do is drag that pin back into the hole and you'll notice it's stopped at a location when we've reached a collision so that pin can't move any further as a result of its expansion or just purely because the end of the pin has hit the bottom of the hole as it should do in the first instance. 
if I switch back to the front elevation now, you'll see that we do actually have a certain portion of that pin protruding from the top face of that top plate, which isn't what we want. And so from that point, we might have to go and change materials or change our design slightly. We might have to make that counterbore a little bit deeper. Okay, thank you for joining me and please join us again soon. If you want to get in touch with us, you can visit our website at www.innova-systems.co.uk You can email us at support at innova-systems.co.uk or you can call us on the number on your screen.